here we see Kitty sleeping. Look carefully to the right of the image. That's Meg's hand playing with Kitty. Meg's somnolescent in this state. You can see the hair to the right of the image increasing in height and decreasing in height in proportion to Kitty's breathing rate. Here she becomes aroused slightly, looking back at her mommy. The grooming sedates the kitty with peacefulness and she resumes lying down again. You might wonder, why would I shoot and post such a video? Well, the thing is, it's interesting to watch a mammal in its sleeping state, which is similar to a coma in some ways, since they're less responsive to external stimuli. You can also use the frames to determine the breathing rate of a mammal. In this case, Kitty appears to be breathing around 20 times per minute, although I didn't actually count, that's an estimate. The same phenomenon can be seen here if you examine the fabric below the chin of Megan's chest. The fabric rises and falls directly in response to her breathing rate, which has slowed to around 16 breaths per minute. Again, I did not count, this is a visual estimate based on the timing in the video and watching carefully. I have the ability to focus for long periods as the result of having an undiagnosed type of autism, though Meg says it's a spiritual gifting from God, something I've used daily for many years, in fact more than a decade, to read Wikipedia articles for three to five hours per day, something that people note saying I have an encyclopedic ability to regurgitate knowledge on demand in strange analytical ways. Well, you see Meg flick her wrist there. What's happening is in her cervical vertebrae in her neck, three nerve endings are being pinched because of the angle of the couch and so forth. And this applies pressure to the nerves that radiate through a branchial nerve bundle into the wrist and forearm. So tension in the neck area around the cervical vertebrae can actually cause numbness and pain in the shoulder, wrist, and elbow, specifically the hands and wrists, since they're at the end of that network. This phenomenon is transient in nature and usually recovers by the time someone wakes as cortisol is an anti-inflammatory signaling hormone that increases when we wake. Here, the cropped viewing angle shows more visual detail for breathing analysis. And we will witness Meg in a somnolescent state, sort of responding, but not fully awake. These transition states between sleepiness and wakefulness are some of the more unusual and sometimes even while people are awake they can space out and daydream even while driving, even while doing complex repetitive tasks at the office, while on the computer, while coding software, while doing anything that people do to generate revenue for income so they can pay for life. Are you living to work or are you working to live? Do you know anything about homelessness? Have you ever been homeless? Are you afraid of being homeless? Can you actually afford your car or your rent? Have you ever thought about long-term financial planning? These are the kinds of thoughts that occur to me as I'm trying to fall asleep. Sometimes I just drift off, other times I lay there awake with ideas streaming through my head. There we see a myoclinic jerk and Meg becomes temporarily wakeful. 
I actually enjoy Max, watching Maxie. She's my beautiful wife, and I greatly appreciate her. That sounds nice, and Maxie. She's exceedingly benevolent, kind, and loving. And you can oh. see this even in her half-awake Maggie. state. She continues to pet Kitty. Meg loves Kitty, and I love Kitty, and I love Meg. They add value and meaning to my life that I can't find in any other domain. Well, that about wraps up my commentary on this video. Enjoy the rest of the footage if you're weird enough to keep watching. We should go for a walk. Meg wants to go for a walk. I'm going to show you how